part quite yet because it's not 501 yet. We'll sign it on here. Welcome, Kathleen. Uh, you come on and you're muted. If you want to unmute yourself and say anything, you can click the little red microphone there. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'll keep an eye on the waiting room here. Uh, there is somebody coming in, um, but we're going to get started. Welcome to 501 Wednesday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for those of you who have not been to a 501 Wednesday before, it's a weekly Zoom focusing on the people, personalities, places, and wines of the Slow Coast Wine Collective. And I'm Paula Dooley, and I'm your host tonight. And we, I'm so excited to have Eric, one of my favorite people in the biz here. And yes, Eric is the winemaker at Tally Vineyards and along with his wife, Kate, founded and is a winemaker for Ann Albert Wines. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about both of those today. So first, I always like to know what you have in your glass, Eric, or glasses in my case. But Yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, I have my, my, my. <laughs> My Zoom tradition is when I get back, get home from the winery, I have to, you know, drink a little, have one beer, right? And then it, uh, move on to uh, a little Chardonnay. I actually have that, uh, the 2017 uh, Ann Albert Biennacito in my glass right now, because uh, um, that's the bottle that I, I, I gave you earlier today. So I figured, hey, I should probably open this up and at least we're on the same page on one of the wines, you know? Yeah, well, that's delicious. Um, I, uh, I had a Coravin to get a taste of my tally wine and then I ran out of gas before I got to the Ann Albert. So now I get to drink the whole bottle tonight. That's great. I'm sure Steve will appreciate that. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> That's um, right. So I have, I, as you said, I have the Biennacito Chardonnay, Ann Albert Biennacito Chardonnay 2017. And then from my cellar, I have a 2015 uh, Tally Stone Corral Vineyard Pinot, which is yeah, fantastic. fun to talk about later. Yeah, so I'm keeping an eye on the tasting on the uh, waiting room here. If you see me look around, that's what Perfect. it is. Um, so why don't we start talking about uh, about Ann Albert and when did you start that, Eric? Yeah, so our first vintage was uh, 2015. So um, I guess I guess to probably back up a little bit, a lot of people want to know who who is Ann Albert. Uh, it's not a person really. It's people. Uh, it's it's my wife and I, uh, Kate and I. It's our middle names put together. So she's Kate Ann Johnson, and I'm Eric Albert Johnson, and uh, we you know we thought of a bunch of cool Latin names, and it just uh, it, it didn't resonate personally. So we decided let's 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 jam things together. Uh, you know, kind of kind of steal a little bit of Steve's uh, middle name magic and uh, kind of <laughs> go with that. Um, and so, yeah, we, in 2015, you know, our, our whole thing is we wanted to make kind of a California Chablis. That was, that was our, our deal. We, we know that, you know, California is very different from, from Chablis, but um, we thought there were some really great vineyards out there that, that would uh, be um, Chablis-esque, I guess you could say. And so um, 2015, we were able to get some uh, Zodovich Chardonnay from Santa Rita Hills. Um, at that time, Ryan Zodovich was the winemaker out there, and, and he, he kind of hooked me up where we became winemakers the same year in 2010. I was obviously at Tally. Um, and then we were able to get the Biennacito, which, which is what I have in the glass right now. And, you know, my thing is working at Tally a lot is, is old vines. We have a lot of old vine Chardonnay. And so I wanted some old vine Chard and a Biennacito offered us some stuff from uh, 1974. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the Millers and, and Michael Brigelli at the time. And so that, that was really cool. And so uh, that was our inaugural vintage was two Chardonnays, uh, just what people need more of, right? <laughs> It's a workhorse though. People love yeah, Chardonnay, yeah. you know, yeah. it outsells every, all the other whites, like, I don't know, by a factor of 
five, I think. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, I, I love Chardonnay, so. <laughs> and uh, today's show is not to compare and contrast uh, your the two brands, but it is really different from the totally. Tally Chardonnays. It's, totally. uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I like both, but I, yeah. as soon as I tasted it, I was like, wow, okay, we got a different yeah. thing here going. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, intentionally, I guess, you know, our, one of our, our big things was uh, we wanted to play with grapes in Santa Barbara County. Obviously, I don't do that at Tally because, you know, we have great vineyards in Rio Grande Valley and Edna Valley. And so, um, the other thing was again the Chablis like so we no new oak it's all native it's it's uh, native fermentation primary it goes through secondary fer fermentation as as well uh, native and I age it for really about 16 months uh, surly uh, about really about 14 months of that no sulfur as well um, give it a little sulfur just right before bottling and rack the bottle no filtering no no fining I don't heat stabilize I don't cold stabilize it I kind of <laughs> just kind of do do my thing which is uh my my uh i guess you could say lazy hands-off winemaking but it's just something that i i want to do from, from a philosophical standpoint and really just kind of show off these these vineyards make it you know really transparent for what we're doing you know but it's really it's really clean and crisp and delicious yeah. thank you thank you yeah i dig the 17th it's a great vintage so and then uh i told you i was gonna bring this up because i'm so intrigued that you make gamay yeah. In the United States. Yeah. So yeah. my question is like, did you find Gamay or did Gamay find you? Um, I, I guess uh, early on Gamay found me and then I finally found some Gamay. Uh, like you and I discussed earlier, there's, there's really not a ton of Gamay uh, planted in California. There's more and more every year, that's for sure. Um, we wanted to start our, our label off with, with Chardonnay and Gamay. We just couldn't get Gamay until our third vintage. And luckily enough, uh, we, you know, Martian Ranch, which is uh, outside of Los Alamos, east side of 101, it's a biodynamic vineyard. It's really the oldest uh, Gamay vineyard in Santa Barbara County. And we always wanted that vineyard, but they wouldn't give us the fruit, uh, which, which happens a lot for great vineyards. And it, finally we wore them down and we got some fruit in 2017. And so uh, Love Gamay, uh, we make it in that kind of Cru Beaujolais style, which is, you know, red wine, normal red wine style for, for uh, Beaujolais, for Gamay in, in the Beaujolais region of France. Um, it's, uh, I mean, our, our Gamay, I, I wish I had a, a, a bottle for you right now. I, I need to, I will get that to you at some point. I'll get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we do about 75, 80% whole cluster on it, really try to get some carbonicness. So really fermentation within those berries. Uh, I like the lifted aromatics we get. I, I like the kind of pop of, of uh, light kind of flavors that you get from that. And I, I try not to mix it up a lot because I don't want stem. I don't want to taste a lot of stems. I want to taste the fruit still and taste the vineyard, but I feel like, um, you know, great game has some sort of carbonic um to it and so uh, we, we do that's our kind of a fermentation method and then all neutral oak again so we don't we're not we're not a you know like kobe kobe parker garcia you know he, he doesn't like the ann albert brand because i don't buy any new oak uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's hard but it, again it's you know philosophically just kind of what we're doing with the brand and again to, it, it sets us a, a, a difference from tally that's that's for sure in the more traditional burgundian uh winemaking style would you say that um, from a, a drinker's perspective, like in a restaurant or something, Gamay is just like one standard deviation from Pinot? From Pinot. Still Absolutely. has sensibility of of it fits where pinot fits would you say yeah that? I, I absolutely agree i think i think gamay much like pinot it, it, it can really be all over the place so you can uh, my, my wife kate and i were actually just talking about uh gamay's um you know around the world and and it is it is the, it is like a cousin to pinot it's like right there with pinot and i think a lot of people it, it's easy uh sale for us because i think so many people are familiar with, with, you know, the characteristics that Pinot Noir has. Um, but in saying that you'll, some vintages like 2015 in, in Beaujolais, you're, you're talking about 15% alcohol on, on some great, on these great, great properties uh, in, in some of the great Appalachians there. So it, they, weather plays a very huge factor uh, in, in, um, in Beaujolais. And so it, it does here as well, uh, that's for sure. But I, I think that the freshness, the energy that, that Gamay has, 
is what what draws people to it for the most part you know it's not heavy for even even 15 percent gamay a lot of them actually still they're, they're pretty nimble on their toes um to me <laughs> well uh, in preparing for today i went to wine folly to look at like where is gamay planted in the world and uh, there's a pie chart and france gets like all but the tiniest little slice and then there are five other countries and then the u.s is lumped in with other <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even make real. we didn't even make our own uh, pie yeah. slice there. Yeah, uh, Niagara. You know, there's a lot a lot of gamay over there in Canada. Um, up up there, I've, I've uh, I, um, I think you guys know Dimitri. Uh, I think you know. Him. So he he's uh, dropped off some some Canadian gamays for us and and kind of opened that that door for us. And there's more in Oregon now. I mean, it's it's, it's expanding. That's for sure. And there's a little bit more wars uh, in California to to get more gamay. Um, I'm we're fighting those wars. We're we're luckily, you know, in 2018 uh, or 20 no 2019, my vintages are all off. Uh, uh, we were able to get some Presqu'ile gamay out of Santa Maria Valley, um, some of their early stuff, and that that's fun to to work with. And, and Martian actually just gave us. Uh, it sounds scary. I think Steve's going to go crazy when I say this. Three times the amount of gamay that, I, that I've ever had before. So um, it's, uh, it, we sell out very quickly. We need more gamay. Um, it's, just, it's just something that, that we need to do. And there's not a lot out there. So we will corner the market. I, I will be All okay right. with that. Yeah. I saw on your website that the 18 is sold out. And do you have a projected release date for the 19? Yeah, as soon as the labels show up, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for labels right now uh, to bottle both of the Martian and the Presqu'ile. Um, I, originally, I wanted it to come out uh, beginning of July, and with COVID and all this stuff, things have just been delayed to, to get to it. So um, I'm hoping that it's in bottle in the next two weeks. I love real answers like that because yeah, there's I mean, so many yeah. times that the real answer is waiting for a label or waiting for a class or yeah. waiting for a schedule uh, where you can make it happen. Yeah. Well, I'm making is logistics. Uh, you know, that's that's what takes up most of our time, I'd say. Yes, it's true. <laughs> um, well, we should probably talk about uh, Tally Vineyards now, really? your, your day job and yeah. uh, and one of my favorite places to drink wine from and visit. Love those people. Yeah. And um, we all know about Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and we'll come back to those. But what's new happening at Tally? Yeah, yeah, it's it's been it's been a fun couple of years, honestly. We we've, you know, we we've always had a lot of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay uh, on the property, and and '07 we planted a little bit of Syrah. But other than that, it's really the the things we've had the entire time. Um, you know, Saw Blanc and Riesling we we've actually had since 1982. So we we've always kind of had those going, and then. Um, you know, I finally, uh, you know, I, I, I doubt Brian's watching me. He'll watch me eventually. But we opened up and it's like, let's diversify a little bit. You know, Tally, Tally's closest neighbor is John Alban, really. Um, Slide Hill's right there as well, Roan producers. And so we took some cuttings from Slide Hill and from, from Alban and we planted more Syrah. We planted Grenache. Um, and the most fun thing uh, that we planted was uh, Gruner Bellinger. And that, that was planted in, in Oliver's Vineyard in the Edna Valley. You know, Gruner uh, is a it's super, it, super fun, light, um, um, uh, I think the, the kids call it crushable uh, of wine nowadays. <laughs> it, uh, I, I'm surprised how good it is, um, you know, 2019 just out the gate. It's, uh, we, we, we were very careful with it, just stainless fermentation, just kind of let, let's just see what it tastes like on a, in a pure environment kind of a thing. And uh, we're stoked. And, and uh, it's funny because people ask us, well, why did you, you know, why, why Gruner of all things, why Gruner? And uh, it, it's because of Johnny and Tally's favorite white varietal besides Chardonnay. So, you know. I think one time, probably 10 years ago, now that you say that, I happen to be at a tasting where Brian and Johnine were, and we went to someplace in San Francisco and had, I don't know whose it was, Gruner and oysters. But yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect pairing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's fun to play with different uh, varietals. I love making Pinot and Chard. I love Pinot and Chard. There's nothing, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a different kind of um, adventure, uh, I guess you could say. And uh, it expands the harvest a little bit as well. Uh, we, Grenache doesn't come off until really the last stuff, um, but we're stoked. We're stoked. Uh, actually, I, I opened up 
a few tasting notes tonight on the 2018 Grenache. So I actually do have, I have, I have this next to me if I can kind of see it, you know, there we go. There you go. Yeah. Backwards, you know? Um, so it's, it's fun to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to do these things, uh, look, Syrah, like, try, you know, Ode to Northern Rhone and, you know, I'm not really doing any new Oak, a lot of whole cluster in it. And, and then Grenache, just trying to make a really pretty Grenache, not too heavy. I, I don't, I always say, uh, I don't like to, um, drink my, my wine with spoons, you know, it, it doesn't need to be thick. It, I want it to be, I always like wine. I, I always like to have more than one glass, I guess is, is my thing, which, you yeah. know, it, it happens. So. Well, someone has just chatted up. Is it a high acid variety? And I, I think that was about Grenache unless it was about Gruner, but I'm about, gonna, well, let's talk one, about Grenache. Yeah. 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 So Gruner, yes, it's quite, quite uh, energetic and vibrant electric, I guess is probably the word. Um, the Grenache actually carries a, decent um acid profile where we are uh, we get we get a decent crop like how grenache is and uh it, it holds its acid fairly well so I, i'd say both are, are are bright gruner the brightest that's on another spectrum i think these cool climate grenaches are just from the edna valley that uh, or from i should say this coastal region are super fascinating and way more interesting than a grenache from a a warm climate that can get jammy. These have, when I open a bottle, like there's this poor glass, so much complexity yeah. that uh, comes from, I think, being that late ripe, I would guess, being that very late ripener. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think, I think cool climate rones, I, I love cool climate rones. That's, that's my drive. I think you get more spice characteristic. You get more, obviously, that pepper characteristic. They're, they're, they're prettier. Uh, they do hold their acid more. Um, I, I, I agree. I, I love it. You know, I, 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 what kind of um, really made me want to plant Grenache at Tally was uh, Steve. I think Steve got that Jesperson Grenache years ago. I mean, that was that was a long time ago. And I remember, I mean, that was Jill and Daniel days. And and that, that stuff was so great. I love that stuff. Um, I think they realized how good that stuff is, too. And then maybe he didn't get it anymore. Uh, <laughs> you guys didn't get any more. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was a awesome stuff. And so that, that really kind of started turning me over. It's like, man, we really be great to get some Grenache there. Um, and I just, again, don't make it, I didn't want to make it super ripe and goopy. And I just wanted to have some, some elegance to it. Yeah, I think we, we've gotten actually Grenache, Jesperson and Spanish Springs, and then B-Suite, which is the vineyard that, you know, that sometimes and more of you. Oh, I heard your dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He likes to bark at uh, the, the, the uh, runners outside. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> well, awesome. hopefully they're not running by at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. No. <laughs> when can people expect to be able to buy some of those Tally Roan? Yeah, so I think the, the Syrah, the 17 Syrah just got released, so it's out. Um, that's tasting really nice. The Grenache, I believe, is out August 1st, I want to say, uh, I believe. Um, the Gruner's out. The Gruner is, is selling quite uh, rapidly. So if people want Gruner, I would go for it. We, 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 we're not expecting that many people to uh, want Gruner, honestly. So we're, we're, we're stoked. Um, I think we'll have even more this year. Gruner likes to throw a nice crop. Uh, but that's yeah, always it, nice. Yeah, it's good from a from a monetary standpoint, that's for sure. But yeah, it's in the next month or two, the Grenache will be out and, and everything will just keep going. And I, I think I think with 2019, I'll, I'll have a uh, Syrah Grenache um, blend as well. Or it will be a Grenache Syrah. I, I, don't, I just want to put a little bit of Syrah. So I'll do Syrah, Grenache Syrah, and then Grenache. That's a great combo. And we have a uh, question too about Chenin Blanc, the oh. room that was. Yeah. Yeah. So Chenin Blanc, um, I mean, frankly, I, I'm trying to get Chenin Blanc in this next year. So I, I hope, I hope, uh, uh, I hope 2021 we get Chenin Blanc in. Uh, most likely it'll be a graft. Uh, it's cheaper that way. And, and just to kind of reallocate some, some grapes around. Uh, I'm a big Chenin fan. I think that um, I think Edna Valley. I, I I think the success that Center of Effort has had with their their new Shannon. Um, I, I think that's great for Edna Valley as well. I think um, 
you know, Albarino has kind of kind of been there for, for a while. And there's a lot of Albarino out there. And I think bringing another white uh, varietal that's not Chardonnay is going to be huge. So um, I hope I hope by 2022, if I graft, I'll, I'll actually be able to uh, to do this again. Well, hopefully in person by 2022 uh, and, and have a shit in a bottle, though. You guys can have a whole aromatic white flight. Yeah, Sally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. You yeah, have a nice right. holding in the aromatic white. Um, yeah. category. Um, well, let me um, ask you: How does one go about buying the Ann Albert wines these days? Do you have a wine club? Yeah, we're the worst wine club member or members of, of, of winery out there. We're 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 so bad about forming it. We we just how how everything has kind of worked out. We we're not our wines just aren't on the, the right page. So, but yes, we do have one. We are, we are, uh, the, the 17s will go out. Um, one of the parts of our thing is we age our Chardonnays in bottle for a year before we release them too. Um, you know, the first year it was a little hard because that's no money for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we figured that out now. Um, so yeah, go to our website, Ann Albert Um, and, and you know, you can go on there. You can buy our wines there. You can um, join the club, check out our stuff. You can always email us. Um, it's and and Wine Sneak. Wine Sneak always has our wine. I mean, Ash and Mary have been huge uh, for us. Um, there's a couple other places around town, but I don't know if any of them are open any, right now. <laughs> this is the is the issue uh, in our current state. So. Yeah, everybody's had to learn how to ship and do curbside. All these little retailers that were not set up for that. Yep it's not super easy for them to make that transition. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different. You know, it's, it's nice what Tally has out there with the space. Um, you know, you and I talked about that yesterday. It's that the wide space is, is good for our current situation. Um, and you can, you can get any wine you want there curbside. You can, you can taste out there spaced out. They've done a really good job making sure it's a safe environment. Yeah, spacing people out is the, being outside and spacing people out is where it's at, man. People yeah. don't want to go to confined places. No, sure. not at all. And then um, back to the more traditional wines from Tally. I think you mentioned there was something new coming out. Those are always highly. Oh yeah. A, a new release, I should say. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a you know, it's getting towards harvest, which means um, our next round of single vineyard pinots are are going to be released. So. Stone Corral, uh, which you guys are very, very familiar with. Um, Rincon and, and Rosemary is all getting released. I actually have Rosemary's here because I, I lost my tasting notes for this one. So <laughs> I have to view this as well. I don't know where they went. Um, so I'll uh, actually, I'll probably taste that now with you. Are you, are you tasting the Stone Corral? Now? I have the Stone Corral 15, which feels, I mean, it was in our cellar in the, in the yeah. back there. It's kind of labels kind of beat up. It is delicious and soft. And every time I have an older Pinot, I, I am re reinforced in my belief that we should wait on a lot of these red wines <laughs> that we make and drink because it yeah. is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in 2015 was was a uh, interesting year. It was like, you know very short crop, height of the drought. Um, we didn't get much crop really anywhere. Uh, it was it was it was it was a rough from that standpoint. That I think that the wines had uh, a lot of texture. They were quite drying. Uh, it took a little time to, to come around, but you're right. It, you know, you, you you if you can have patience and, and let them sit out sit in your cellar for a little bit. You'll be rewarded eventually, um, and and I've had a lot of the 15s. It's it's amazing seeing you know we you know we keep a really deep library at Tally, and it's amazing seeing um, the transition these wines make, and it's it's uh it's fun you know especially Stone Corral from 04 all the way uh, to to now is is pretty cool, and I like the 19 too. I need to what I'll do, I need to pull a sample and drop off a sample of the 19 since we didn't get to have our uh, our normal stone corral uh, tasting uh with uh kenzie um i'm i'm stoked it's the most i think personally it's the most aromatic um uh stone corral that that, that we've made uh, I, I tasted it again on friday back out of barrel and uh, I'm, I'm super stoked for it i think we could do a zoom tasting if we just have yeah. a little depot to trade some uh trade some samples and then taste yep. the um, I have a question from somebody asking the name of the Ann Albert Winery again. So why don't you say the name and the name of the website? 
Oh, okay. It's Ann Albert, A-N-N-A-L-B-E-R-T. And uh, the website is annalbertwines.com. I think if you just put Ann Albert in there, you'll get that as well, because I, I got my, my website notification that I bought a lot of websites. So <laughs> I think you'll find it eventually. It's, it, it'll, it'll sneak up on you. Yeah. If, and, if you see a picture of, uh, of me and my wife and maybe, maybe my dog and this label, you're on the right uh, track, I guess. It's a, it's a really pretty package um, oh, with a you. very simple label and the color of the wax is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. our friend hand, hand drew uh, the label and um, yeah, it's all friends, all friends. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, does anybody else, uh, uh, we had another comment that said the 2019 Pinot Noirs are wonderful. That came from Mr. Dooley. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I, I see the group chat now. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the 19s are great. I, I, I don't, at first I thought they were like the 18s, but they're, they're not as, they don't have the, as wide a breath, I think, as the, the 18s have. Um, I'm, I'm like, Chardonnay's took a little bit, a little time to, to come around. Um, we, we, we have a very slow fermentation at Tally, um, slow and cold and, you know, don't mind this guy over here, um, slow and cold <laughs> and, and uh, you know, it, we eventually, uh, there we go. Hey there. buddy. <laughs> Hi buddy. <laughs> That's Gary. He, he's, Gary. he likes to crash Zoom meetings. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, yeah, we, it, it took some time, but, but, you know, all of our Chardonnays finally went dry, uh, the first week of July, which is, uh, it's stressful. Um, yeah. Stressful I think time. we had some of those as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I'm and, not the only one. And I can't believe that it's July anyway, as far like Steve and Trace taste in the cellar when they're doing stuff with the wine, but we haven't had a crew here. Everybody's working remotely. So we really haven't done any tasting. I haven't tasted the 19s in months now. Yeah. They taste them, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a bizarre season. year. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's blending season for me. So all I've been doing for probably the last month is just is tasting and tasting and, you know, trying blends and trying to figure that, that, that whole thing out. And thankfully this week I finished. Um, it's, it's another thing. It's just, uh, I mean, it, it is very nice again, going back to shards that when you, when you go back, you bring that thief into that barrel and you're like, Oh, it's clear. And it's, it's not sweet. That That's pretty awesome. So um, it's just, uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of other people that were worried, uh, that that was not going to happen. So <laughs> always happens. Brian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brian, other people, you know, whoever. I worry. Steve doesn't worry so much. I like to worry about things. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I don't, I try not to worry until, uh, I, I have to worry, I guess you could say. Good. That's a good attitude. That's why I have, uh, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting wider and grayer. So <laughs> it's all, it all, all the stress goes to the beard. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. I don't have any more questions coming in in the chat. Um, yep. Next week we have Nathan Carlson from Center of Effort, and there's so much happening over there. I don't know what our topic is going to be, but we have lots to choose from because that place has been completely transformed in the last couple of years. Yeah. Can you ask him how, he, how they made their Chenin Blanc so I can just know and learn from him? Because it's, it's delicious. I will put that on the list because <laughs> I said, you know, we could talk about concrete eggs, but Chenin Blanc would be a good one because nobody else is making it around here. I don't think so. I think they're, the, they're they are the only ones. That's all right. Pretty cool. Yep. All right, Eric. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. I've had fun with my double fisted yeah. drinking here. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> I love all it. right. Cheers. Ciao. Good Cheers. Bye, Bob. See you, Steve. Bye.